Welcome to this At Your Pace Online course on changes to NFPA 70 2020, the NEC. My name is Chuck Price and I'll be your instructor for this course. The code book is constantly undergoing changes due to the new technologies as well as the retirement of others. Concerns for safety and workmanship constantly influence new changes also. Many of those same influences contributed to this edition. During the last three-year code cycle, there were over 3,500 public proposals for changes submitted. This resulted in about 1,400 suggested revisions, almost 200 more than the previous cycle. Each of the 18 code-making panels are made up of working electricians and inspectors, manufacturers, and researchers. They review each input for worth and relevance and compile them into a first draft, which is made available for public responses. After those responses, about 700 proposed changes made it to the second draft, and most were formally adopted, some with a few additional revisions and a final review by the correlating committee. This course won't address every one of those changes. Many changes that were similar occurred to several sections, and it doesn't make sense to discuss them over and over. Instead, we'll pick one and then mention in a side note where similar changes were made in the NEC. This class is a special selection of about 50 code changes that are more likely to impact a power-limited technician. About half of those changes are of a general nature, things like definitions or wiring methods. The second half of the changes are to the codes that directly affect PLT, which means that entire articles will be covered, not just selected sections. Let's talk for a minute about how we're going to present the material. We're giving you a clear view of each change by providing both a snapshot and an in-depth look at the details. We'll also focus on what it means to you in the field. We'll use the following format. An introduction to the changes with an illustration. Then a headline of the kind of change it is, like a new section or subsection, or a revision to the existing code language, and a thumbnail description of what's been changed. Then we'll have a brief summary of the change. That'll be followed by the text of the 2020 version of the NEC, along with any deletions from the 2017 NEC by crossing out deleted words and with a clearly shown cut and paste overlay of any new language that's been added to the new code. Finally, we'll discuss what the change means and the reason it was installed in the code. We'll also provide links to more information when it helps. During the course, you'll also be presented with questions. These are used to verify your participation in the class, and they're a good teaching tool by letting you see the information right away. If you have a copy of the 2020 NEC, keep it handy. It'll be helpful for you in answering questions or for filling in any information we didn't have the time to present. Also, if at any point in a lesson you have a question or concern, feel free to leave a comment or question in the suggestion box. Now, let's look at how the NEC is constructed, and I'll also go through terms we'll be using to describe the different kinds of provisions when I discuss them. The NEC begins by dividing the codes into chapters. Each chapter covers a broad topic encompassing various aspects of that topic. Each chapter is then divided into articles. These are the broad aspects within that larger topic. Some articles are divided into parts. The codes within each part often apply only within that part. We'll always list the part where it's a factor, so pay attention to that term. The next level down is the section. Each section is a significant topic. It may be all contained in one paragraph or broken into subdivisions, also called subsections. Subsections bear the number of the section, followed by a letter or number or both. Higher level subsections will also have a title. The final subdivision within a section is the list. These are shown as lowercase letters or numbers. List items are conditions that must be met either in total, where all list items must be fulfilled, or individually, where each list item is an optional condition to be met. Within each section, there might also be an exception that removes the obligation to adhere to some or all of the section. This is usually when specific conditions are met. Exceptions are in italics, and where the exception only applies to a subsection or list item, it follows that subsection or list item directly. Some sections will also have an informational note. 
These are not mandatory provisions, but point the user to some of the resources needed to follow best practices for the section. Informational notes are indented and in smaller font. Some sections might also refer to a table that provides specifics on how to apply that code section in the field, or refer you to other sections for guidance, which the NEC prefers to do rather than repeat the text over and over. That's everything you need to know about the course before we start. After a brief question, we'll have a quick overview of how the 2020 NEC has changed.